hot and humid. Those are going to be the two main words, not just today, but for the next several days across portions of Kelo land, especially in central and southeastern parts of the area. Hot, especially toward Piers, who falls either side of 100 at best. We're talking about 80s, but even though you have to head up toward Aberdeen and the North Dakota border, it's going to be a humid day across the board and a rather warm night as well with low temperatures in the upper 60s to low to mid 70s. We'll go through the rest of your forecast, including updates on those heat related headlines coming up in a little bit. But until then, midday in Kelo Land starts right now. Live from Kelo Land Media Group, midday in Kelo Land. A snake found in a Sioux City Target shopping cart finds a new home. Plus, Hillary hammered parts of Southern California and Nevada. I'm Max Darrow in Las Vegas with the aftermath and why there is still risk of flooding and mudslides. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. With extremely high temps expected to last much of this week, some schools are moving practices indoors and businesses are already making schedule changes. The Great Plains Zoo is closing at 2 o'clock today through Wednesday. Sioux Empire Baseball Association announced changes to tryouts and more. And Huron Salvation Army is extending its community center hours so people have a place to go to cool off and drink water. An excessive heat warning will be in effect today through Wednesday for much uh, the southeastern part of our viewing area. Stay with Kelowland News to watch out for additional closures statewide. And chatting with Adam before the show, it sounds like we could have several records fall this week. Yeah, or a bare minimum challenge. To, to, for those of you keeping score at home, today's record high in Sioux Falls is 98. I think we should be able to at least challenge that. It's 100 for your record on Tuesday and 103. Three on Wednesday. Actually, flip those. 103 on Tuesday, 100 on Wednesday. Either way, we are going to be dealing with record challenging heat. That's the take home message. And that's not even counting the humidity that we're going to have to deal with as well. Here's a view from downtown. Well, yes, there is cloud cover. No, it's not doing much to make things feel better. 84 at the airport with a south wind at 13 miles per hour. So, yes, there's a breeze, but it is a warm wind. And as a result, it is doing exactly nothing to help things out. We're in the 80s. In in multiple locations, or if you're in winter, you're already at 96. Valentine at 94, 82 for Worthington, 85 Chamberlain, 80 Pier, 88 as you head into Phillip. But we do have some cooler spots, 68 in Spearfish, Faith, and Buffalo. But then you flip the numbers, you have Custer and Spencer. In Huron, though, it's 82. But then you notice that dew point of 73 degrees. It is muggy out there. The heat index already at 88 with a south wind at 15 miles per hour. So we're going to be talking about the dew point a lot over the next couple of days and for good reason when you get dew points in the 70s like what we have from pier to brookings and then down to yankton and spencer it is just downright muggy or if you're in chamberlain a dew point of 78 so the end result is this it feels like it's 91 degrees in sioux falls keep in mind uh, the air temperature is 84 it feels like it's 99 in win in winter uh, heat index of 97 for spencer it feels like it's 88 in yankton it's just going to be downright soupy at times. Uh, heat advisory in place in orange until 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain Time from areas just south of Watertown through Redfield and the Miller Pier and then down along I-90 and Lyman and Jones County. For Todd, Tripp, and Millet County, that heat advisory is in place until Wednesday night. And then we also have our excessive heat warning which is in place in pink that you'll see in just a moment for southeastern Kelo land from Huron to Sioux Falls, Mitchell, Madison, Marshall, Worthington, Pipestone into Yankton, all of northwestern Iowa as well, starting this afternoon and going through Wednesday night as heat index values may reach and exceed 105 to 110 degrees at times. This is going to be some very uh, dangerous heat and humidity we're going to be dealing with. The fever does break Eventually, though, that's the key word, though. We'll talk about the short term heat and then the long term relief coming up in your seven day forecast. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Adam. Two men are behind bars accused of going on a Friday night crime spree in Sioux Falls. Authorities say it all started with Brady Cloud following another car around eight o'clock when he stopped at 18th and Kiwanis. Cloud Got Jordan Cloud got out of the passenger seat, allegedly pointed a gun at another driver, and then took off with his phone. Police say a few minutes later, the two men got into a fight where they punched and kicked a guy and nearly ran over a woman. When police tried to stop them, 
Brady Cloud allegedly sped off and hit another car before jumping out of the moving vehicle and running away from police. Authorities ended up arresting both men on several charges. They're both scheduled to appear in court this afternoon. Hundreds of teachers and staff are back at school today in Rapid City. Right now, the district is hosting orientation for educators ahead of the first day of school tomorrow. The program is meant to welcome teachers back to the classroom. Calland's Tyler Louder is at the orientation, and he's going to talk with a few teachers about preparing for the first day of school. That's coming up for you later tonight. Earlier in August, we shared a story about a boa constrictor that was found in a Target shopping cart in Sioux City, Iowa. That snake, now named Tarjay, will be getting a new home. The six-foot-long snake was picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue. The rescue waited a week for a potential owner, and soon enough, Professor Dan Fogel with Southeast Community College made the trip up from Lincoln to give Tarjay a new home. Fogel said that he hopes to use him for outreach and as a kid-friendly snake to take photos with on Kids Science Night. After pounding Southern California yesterday and other parts of the southwest, including Nevada, the remnants of Tropical Storm Hillary are still posing serious risks today. Forecasters warn more flash flooding as well as mud and rock slides are possible. Max Darrow reports from Las Vegas. As dawn broke in Palm Springs, California Monday, residents woke up to floodwaters rushing through roads after Hillary dumped half of the city's annual rainfall in just a few hours. The first tropical storm to hit Southern California in more than 80 years brought lashing winds and heavy rainfall to a region much more accustomed to drought. As the floodwaters rose quickly in Victorville, California, Juan Pfeiffer and his mother decided to leave for higher ground. All that started within an hour or two and then just kept piling up, up, and the water keeps coming further back up the street. The storm has already triggered mud and rock slides like this one in Sheep Canyon, California. That is all avalanche debris. In Los Angeles, where the storm flooded freeways, schools are closed today. As you know, sometimes damage can occur in the hours and days after a storm hits, so Angelinos should continue to stay vigilant. And it wasn't just California. Floodwaters from Hillary gushed through this casino parking lot in Las Vegas. Here along the Las Vegas Strip, the worst seems to be over. The storm has been downgraded, and the National Hurricane Center expects it to dissipate later today. Nevada's governor had called up the National Guard ahead of the storm. And in Yuma, Arizona, 60-mile-an-hour winds knocked down trees and power lines, leaving parts of the city without electricity. Max Darrow, CBS News, Las Vegas.